Hey everybody, Brian. I'm back in the garage. I got a killer project today. I got a uh, real basket case CR85. This is a 2007 motor, completely uh, mistreated. So uh, it's a basket case, but I'm going to make it look good. So hope you enjoy this video. So let's go to work. This thing, uh, the person who owned it before left this thing outside. It's unbelievable to me when people just neglect beautiful pieces of machinery like this, but that's what happened. This thing was left outside and completely ignored by the owner, rained on, all kinds of stuff. So I got a big job ahead of me. I gotta admit, I got a little bit ahead of myself because the owner told me that the uh, that they had mixed the premix wrong and that the motor had seized because of a premix issue. But I pulled the piston out and there's nothing wrong with that piston, but it will not kick. So something else is going on. I have a feeling that water got in the motor and seized the crankshaft bearing. So I'm kind of excited to tear into this one. So I actually started working on it a little bit before I shot the video this morning. So anyway, but one thing I want to mention to you too. So the way that you break down these heads is uh, you probably know this from reading the manual and stuff, but you want to break these things down like little here, little there, little here, little there. Do it in like three steps, crisscrossing around to remove the head and the same thing with the jug, okay? I've already done that because I, like I said, I was a little excited to kind of see if this thing was actually seized and that was a problem. But just to let you know, that's the way that we're starting this. So I already pulled this jug. You can see I already took the piston out. If you've never pulled one of these circlips out of the side of a piston, they are not something that is salvaged. You take a pair of uh, needle nose pliers, pull the edge, and you basically like pry this thing out. Once you do that, you can push the wrist pin out that goes through here, which is the part that passes through here. You just push that out with a tool or something like that. We're about to start tearing down the right side crank out. All right, so that's our job, and let's get going, ready to work. I loosened this already, the kickstart. These uh, big washers go in the cases right here, right here. And then we're gonna break down these uh, right side crank case. All right, so next we're going to, going to break down the clutch. If you've never broken down a clutch before, it's recommended that you do this, these bolts in a crisscross pattern, similar in the way that you do the cylinder head. So you can wedge a little washer or something in between the teeth here oftentimes. I've done it on other motors. I'm not sure if it'll work on this one, but we're going to give it a try. Yep. So this hub nut needs to come out next. And pull the outer clutch basket out. And there's a washer there, easy to lose track of. You can wedge a nut in between the uh, gears here. Remove this nut. Then you can take this outer drive gear off. Remove this. Then you can remove this outer clutch basket. Okay, next is gear shift spindle should come out. And the thrust washer that comes with it. Next to these guide plate bolts, and I've always thought it was very unusual about these guide plate bolts, but they don't have washers. I think that's so odd. Anyway, but those is the next thing to come off. So then you can remove this guide plate and this drum as one assembly. There's poles inside there, and you have to be a little careful because they can come flying out. So remove this as an assembly. Oh. 
that's the way they should look. The poles are on the inside and the most radius edge is the one that inserts into this drum and the sharper edges are on the outside and they have a relief on the inside where the poles slide. So you can see that kind of right there. This is basically the part that has to do with the gear selecting and to, you got to get this uh, little spindle piece out which has a, uh, a hex on there and there's a pin on the back side. You just don't want to lose track of that pin. So once that comes out, you take this piece out. So the way to do this is you relieve this arm, and try to get the tension off of that drum. I'm sorry I didn't get to see that, but it was easier to pull it straight up than to pull it out like this. So see that little detent right there? That lines up with this pin on installation. This pin right here, this pin right here, and it ends up lining up with this hub right here when it's assembled. Next is this stopper arm bolt. Remove that. Okay. So this idler gear should just come out. Yep. So the next thing is to remove this kickstart spring from this hole that it's resting in in the crankcase. That's not that difficult. There we go. So that is the kickstart mechanism. Next is the ratchet guide plate bolt. This side looks pretty done. Now that we've got the right side crankcase disassembled, it's time to go to the ignition side, the left side. So we're going to button this up. I'm going to put these things in Ziplocs and label everything really carefully. And next we're going to go into the left side crankcase half and then we're going to uh, split these cases and find out what the mystery is about why this motor didn't run. The ignition side has these uh, regular Phillips screwdriver head screws. Those just come out with a regular screwdriver, four attachments for that. If you don't have one of these, you're going to have to get one. This is an ignition holder that we basically used to stabilize this ignition when you're loosening that center nut. This one's not too bad. A little washer on there that I... If you didn't see what I did there, this is a magnet on the end of a wand. And I used a little uh, jeweler's size screwdriver to pry up under that washer. Flywheel puller. This one is made by uh, Motion Pro. And this is reverse thread. Okay. Then you just need a couple of big wrenches to pull that off. And the flywheel comes off, and there's always a woodruff key under there. It's so interesting to me, the magnetic strength of this is really impressive. You pull it off and this thing really wants to fight against you. This is the uh, woodruff key, which I don't know if you can see it, but I'll zoom this in when I, uh, when I get this ignition piece off and you'll see. So one of the nice things about the CR80, CR85 motor is that the ignition timing cannot be adjusted. And let me tell you, that makes me happy because I do not like ignitions or timing or anything like that. So this one's pretty simple. There's two Allens basically that come out of here. Okay. Then the exciter plate comes off with this grommet. So you pop this sucker out and the whole thing slides out as a unit. And there it is. Next thing that needs to come off is this uh, drive gear, which is rusted and disgusting. I'm going to use the impact on this one, so I'm going to lay this thing on its side. <laughs> and now I've got this entire ignition portion completely removed, and basically we're ready to split the cases, which gets me very excited. 
and uh, it's, uh, it's basically on. So about to split these cases and see why this crank won't spin. So it's interesting, the crank will kind of spin, but the rod doesn't want to. So I'm thinking somehow that rod bearing at the big end is seized, and that is really what the root of the problem was on this, uh, on this motor. The piston was what the original owner thought would seize, but seems like everything is working. The, the crank is stiff, but it does spin, so we'll see what happens. So next is splitting the cases, and let's get inside this thing and find out what's going on, go through the gearbox, and get this basically down to its uh, elemental component. So we're almost there. The next thing to do before you split the cases is remove all these case bolts that are around the perimeter of the cases. Okay. One thing you should note about the CR85 is that under the ignition are three more fasteners. So you just want to make sure that you don't miss these. Uh, I nearly did, to be honest. So just don't forget these three. So once you got to loosen those, just like the other ones around the case, those are also passing all the way through the case. So just pull those all the way out. All right. So I've got all the case bolts loose all the way around the outside edge of the cases, including the three inside the ignition area. And we're ready to do the case bolt. So now that those are loose, the next step is to put on the case puller. So the way that a case puller works is this, this thing screws in and it pulls against the case half by pushing the crank out of the other side. So it's pushing down on the crank and pushing the other crank case half away. So first thing you do is you line up these barbs and then you put these threaded rods in that are part of the case splitting kit. The one that I use is made by Tusk. So screw these threads down all the way until they're uh, seated as low as you can go. And then once that's done, just make sure that you put down these brass nuts until they're at least snug. They don't actually have to be super tight. All right, so if you believe in prayer, now is the time. So I take a big wrench and uh, just start cranking on this thing. And it'll make a pop when they uh, first release. And it's a little unnerving. So uh, just be aware that it does make kind of a little bit of a pop. Now this one, I'm a little bit trouble for some reason. Uh, it's not wanting to break loose. The front's coming apart just fine, but the back is not. And I don't like that at all. Uh, you know, I think I'm going to take a break on this for a second. I'm going to loosen this back up. It doesn't seem right, so I'm going to have to check this again and make sure I've got it right. I look closely at the manual and did not see anything about this little sleeve inside the case halves, but I was splitting the case halves and the front portion was coming open fairly easily and the back was not, and of course that's a something wrong. I looked on the manual, did not see anything. Then I went to a website that had parts for sale and they showed this sleeve. Then I called a friend of mine who is an expert at CR85s and he told me indeed that sleeve needs to come out. Makes sense to me. So now I'm gonna have to apply heat to that to get that uh, to expand enough to remove that sleeve. So I'm not really sure how I'm gonna get it out, but I'm gonna attempt to drive it out or press it out using heat and solvents. So let's see what we can do with that. So let's see if we can get these things to split now that we've got that sleeve out. I have a feeling it's going to go nice and smooth now. Feels like it's coming apart, even in the back. We're about to pop some case halves. So I like to put these clamps on 
as limiters, you know, basically, so that these things can't get too far out of whack. There you go. So that just, probably what that was was the dowel pin uh, holding that, probably a seized up dowel pin. So if you put a little leverage on this side, you can limit how much this part is going up and make the back end basically have to take some of the tension. So that seemed to work actually on its own without, without the case splitter having to be turned. So let's just continue the process and see if we can get them all the way off. Okay, we are at the point now where we're going to take out the uh, the two shafts, the counter shaft and the main shaft. And I just this, these pins basically, you, these are the um, the pins about which the forks rotate. You pull those out, you pull the forks out, and then uh, it's real easy to pull the tranny out from there. All right, so the easiest way to take out these shafts, in my experience, is to take them out together. Oh, this is another thing you should be aware of. These little washers, they will get away from you. Now look for the washers. Make sure you don't leave any behind. So once you remove the gear halves, you put on the case splitter, just like we did on the other side, line it up with three holes, and then insert the threaded rods just as we did when we removed the case halves earlier. Tighten down the little brass nuts and put a little heat on that thing with my big wrench again. It should move. Oh yeah. All right, so not too difficult to get that out. And kapow. A lot of vertical play. Not as much lateral, but vertically lots of play. That's, that's the problem. That's why it wouldn't, wouldn't work. I had to get to the core of the bike to figure it out, but that's it. That's the reason why this thing didn't work, and then we're going to put it back together and make it work great. Okay, that is a day's work for today. Anyway, I had a great time tearing this motor down. We're going to start more on it tomorrow. I'm going to take the bearings out, and then we're going to send this thing off for vapor blasting and then Cerakote. So we got a lot of great things to show you on this motor before it finally ends up being built. So thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video today. And if you did, you know what I'm supposed to ask you, please like and subscribe. So if you would, please like my channel, subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and I'll bring you a lot more. So thanks a lot for watching. Have fun in your garage. Okay, that's removed. Then we can take this uh, inner hub nut off. That can be a little bit of a bear. Basically of this, we're gonna go to the left side and pull out the, the, the uh, basically at this point, I'm gonna burp like four times. 